In last week's episode, we talked about Rick and Morty, the pursuit of knowledge, and Paul Feyerabend's idea of an anarchic scientific method. Let's see what you had to say. Obisam Animations, thank you so much for the kind words. I'm glad that you enjoyed last week's episode, and you were not alone in your concern that anarchy was somewhat misrepresented. Paul Feyerabend does, in some ways, unfairly conflate uh, anything goes and uh, this idea of anarchism, which uh, both of both of which are ideas that factor heavily into against method, uh, where maybe he shouldn't, because you know anarchism is isn't, strictly speaking, anything goes, it's uh, a lack of uh, recognition of authority. And I think really what he's trying to get at is that we tend to give this idea of method within science authority. And he's asking whether or not that method, as we tend to understand it, should have the authority it does. And that's what he means when he says anything goes. This, I think, pairs really well with another set of concerns raised by Tori Holbrook and a bunch of other people sort of saying like, well, there must be ethical limits to this. Or are we really saying that literally anything goes and that it's okay for us to put people or animals in harm's way in the name of an anything goes science, and that is not at all uh, what we're advocating for here. It is rather that um, in the pursuit of knowledge, we should consider our methods as being um, open to any kind of construction of knowledge. And that, that includes science, but also includes things like art, architecture, philosophy, religion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's that anything goes, and not the, you know, burn the villages to the ground, anything goes. Um, whether or not Rick uh, would feel that way, and whether or not he sort of factors into the anything, literally anything goes method. I think that is another question entirely, but that is not what Paul Feyerabend was advocating for. Lori P and friend of Idea Channel Sidejoy talk about how whatever about Rick's method, he is a far from the ideal scientist because he embodies many things that are poorly perpetrated in the modern pursuit of science. As Sidejoy puts it, a, a poorly dressed madman with crazy hair who thinks he knows everything. That Rick, um, you know, is maybe brilliant, but also, you know, especially in, you see in his interactions with Summer is a uh, you know, it's like a sexist curmudgeon, uh, so far, far from ideality in that sense. Hill BB writes a really great comment about how in last week's episode there was maybe some conflation between science and scientists, that while science seems to be this nice kind of uh, holistic body of work uncovering truths or knowledge um, about the world, what scientists engage in is actually far messier and more anarchic than it is usually given credit. And so to say that uh, scientists should adopt a more anarchic process is to kind of just encourage them to continue doing what they do. This, I think, is very much related to another set of concerns raised by Renato E. and a few other people saying that um, science, as it is currently practiced, is no longer really claiming to uncover objective truths about the universe. That really it's um, about creating verifiable sets of knowledge that are perfectly willing to be disproven um, by future work. And that insofar as Paul Feyerabend talks about science um, uncovering knowledge that is true in some way, that's, that's maybe an old-fashioned idea. And I think that that is this is a great point and I think that it's it's totally true and um I think that really what we're talking about is, is the popular idea of science, that when people who are not necessarily scientists are talking about science, they are more likely to talk about it as though it is creating knowledge and it is uncovering truths. Or conversely, if real knowledge or true knowledge does exist, people will tend to think that that knowledge was created by science. And what Paul Feyerabend is saying, like, whoa, 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 I don't know, like, maybe knowledge and truth whatever we think of those things as being, are just as likely to be uh, made by other pursuits. Comments from Archlord Destin and Jay Bantha ask whether or not, in the absence of things like peer review or a scientific community, can we really consider Rick a scientist? That if you are developing this knowledge in a vacuum and you're not sharing it with colleagues or other scientists, are you really doing scientific work? And I think this is a really interesting and really good question. And my gut says no, but I can't really put a finger on why because, right, it's not, there's nothing inherent about the scientific process that says other people have to be involved, but it just seems wrong if they're not. 
I don't know, what do you guys think about this? Relatedly, Desmond Finney talks about how the pursuit of science can be seen as a pursuit of universality and that the humanities are powerful, but they are powerful because of their emphasis on subjectivity. But that subjectivity makes forming a shared body of knowledge very difficult and that the sciences can adopt a, an anything goes process, but that they still have to aim for this idea of universality, which I think is a, a, a really interesting way of looking at this. Thanks for this comment, Desmond. Jan Alfeche takes some of these ideas one step further and says that really in order to be a scientist, one should not only be comfortable, but willing to go against the grain. And I think that this is true to a certain degree, but when it is taken too far, I think that you get into this um, area of obscurantism that it's, you know, you are pushing so hard against the grain that you are encouraged to essentially create nonsense um, because you need to carve out this extra space that doesn't already exist. Uh, and I think this happens a lot in the social sciences. I'd be curious to know whether or not this happens in, um, you know, like theoretical physics it seems like a place where you can really push super hard for very obscure and difficult ideas. I don't know. Ferris Priest writes a great comment about the idea of orthons, which are uh, things that are claiming or reaching for truth, but can never really get to them. And this is something that I never heard about. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, check it out. It's really neat. Professor Politics writes a comment about how Rick might not be the ideal scientist, but together Rick and Morty might create an ideal scientist. That for all of the cynicism and ethical transgression that Rick gets himself involved in, Morty is someone who cares and is curious and wants things to be right, and that the two of them together form a great narrative foil and in the process might actually create a kind of ideal, curious, questioning, and capable uh, scientist. And I think this is a great point. Smaggle Smaggleton, come on. Uncanny Valley's not that bad. The reason it's here is because it's the one that I could get the easiest. I really wanted it to be Emergency and I, but Emergency and I, at the time that I wanted to buy it, I couldn't find it on vinyl. It was because, I mean, it came out in the middle of the height of CDs. So I think they just released it on vinyl. But I'm not, I like, I don't mind Uncanny Valley. Oh, Travis, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I did say science is not the only thing that can contribute to knowledge so that people would watch a YouTube video.